Okay, campers, rise and shine, but don't go outside, cause it's COVID out there. So wash your little hands and dry, there ain't no reason. Rise and shine, but don't go outside, cause it's COVID. So wash your little hands and there ain't no reason you should go Campers, rise and shine, but don't go outside because it's COVID out there. But today is Sunday, so at least we get to worship with our church family from home. Sunday. When the days feel like they just run together, Sunday comes along and puts that smile right back on your face. Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all. We thought it would be a good idea to do our weekly notices. The church building may be closed, but there are things to update you with. Welcome to Richard, who's taking our service this morning. The reflection this evening will be from the Reverend Stephen Wilde, Chair of the Cornwall and Silly Ives Methodist District. Steve's words can be accessed every day on YouTube and also on our church WhatsApp group. The service next week, Pentecost Sunday, will be led by Richard, assisted by Rachel, and whoever else has volunteered to take part. Susie Wake will be the preacher. Neil has arranged for the painting of the toilets and the entry porch. Dave, Angela and Ruby have been and cut the grass and generally tidy around the church garden. Charlie calls around to check the post box and I have been looking at emails that are still coming in from the circuit office. Our church WhatsApp group has many contributors, giving us hymns, prayers and inspirational quotes, as well as the banter our church members are good at, all which helps us through these unfamiliar times. During May, we have continued our support for Sunderland Food Banks, both at Elim and at Silksworth. Keep smiling, take care, stay safe. Over to you, Richard. Thank you so much, Ellen, for that welcome and for those notices that keep us connected. We have a great team of volunteers at North Street. So many people who work so hard all the year round to make sure that everything, everything happens and that no one is forgotten. Even in lockdown, there is so much happening. Phone calls of support are being made, uh, donations given to the food banks and prayers offered all the time. We hope that you've had a good week this week. We're one week nearer the end of lockdown, nine weeks in, but of course, we don't know how many more are to come. It was Ascension Day on Thursday, the day when, as a church, we remember the moment when Jesus left this earth to ascend to the right hand of the Father in glory. A mystical, majestic moment that must have been both awe-inspiring and bewildering for his disciples. So we're going to be thinking today about a question that they might have had on their minds. What's next? What on earth do we do now? But as we come to worship, let us pray. Loving God, we offer to you our worship uh, this morning. We pray that as we do that, we would know your presence with us. And we pray, Lord, that you would uh, just bless each one of us. Thank you that you know us by name. And we offer our worship to you. Amen. We're going to sing our intro right now. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here.
We come to God in prayer now, first of all to offer him praise and worship and then secondly to acknowledge our need of forgiveness. So let us pray. God of life whose love enfolds us and spirit fills us, we praise your holy name. God of joy whose sunrise wakes us and sunset amazes us, we praise your holy name. God of hope whose promise sustains us and power upholds us, we praise your holy name. God of love whose patience humbles us and touch can heal us, we praise your holy name. God of peace, who breaks down barriers and walls that divide us, we praise your holy name. God of eternity, who has always loved us and by grace has saved us, we praise your holy name. And a prayer of confession. God of all ages, who from generation to generation has heard the cries of your children humbly seeking forgiveness and has welcomed sinners back into your embrace. Hear now the thoughts of our hearts and examine our motives. Forgive us our faults of word and action. And we ask this through your Son, who died that we might know the true cost of forgiveness. Amen. We join together now in the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Consider all the works thy hands have made I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe display Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Far as glades I wander And hear the birds Sing sweetly in the trees When I look down From lofty mountain grandeur And see the blue And feel the gentle Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, oh, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art.
As in recent weeks, today's Bible readings are taken from John's Gospel and the Acts of the Apostles. In John chapter 17, we listen in to Jesus in the upper room after the Last Supper and before Gethsemane. He's praying, praying especially for the disciples that after he is gone, they would know the Father's protection and a spirit of unity. And in this prayer, we get a glimpse of events that will unfurl from Easter through to Pentecost. Then in Acts chapter 1, we read of the ascension of Jesus, a mind-blowing event for the disciples who witnessed it. Acts is Luke's sequel to his gospel. He now refers to the disciples as apostles, which literally means those who were sent. It would be their commission in the future to go throughout the world and spread the good news of Jesus. So Rachel is reading to us from, from John's Gospel and Fred, first of all, reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Reading from the Good News Bible, Acts 1, verses 6 to 13. Jesus is taken up to heaven. When the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, The times and occasions are set by my Father's own authority, and it is not for you to know when they will be. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power, and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to the heavens as they watched him, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away, when two men, dressed in white, suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up to the sky? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. Then the apostles went back to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is about a kilometre away from the city. They entered the city and went up to the room where they were staying. Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Patriot and Judas, son of James. Amen. The second reading comes from John chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have revealed to you the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you for I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. Thanks be to God. Amen. 1973 was an epic year. It was a great year. It was the year that the band Mud recorded the classic single, Tiger Feet, possibly the most perfect pop single ever written. Oh, that's neat, that's neat, that's neat, that's neat, I really love your tiger feet. It had a really cool dance that went with it, but I'm not going to do the dance for you. And the 70s, of course, were the very pinnacle of pop music. They don't write them like tiger feet anymore. 1973 was also the year that a certain football team, and if you know me, you'll know that it really hurts me to recount this, 
the year that a certain football team from the North East went down to Wembley and beat the mighty Leeds United 1-0 to lift the FA Cup. Bob Stokoe, Ian Porterfield, Bobby Kerr, Jimmy Montgomery, just some of the names that will never be forgotten. But the most significant event of all that happened in 1973 was this. It was the year that I left school. I'd worked out many years previously that 1973 was going to be the big year, and I'd been waiting for it for a long time. There was no chance of me staying on for the sixth form. As soon as my last O-level exam was done, I was out of the door and away home to get me wellies on, uh, to do what I'd always dreamed of, to be a farmer. But I hadn't thought too much about how that was going to work out. I'd been focused only on the leaving school bit. But having left school, there were so many questions to answer, so many decisions that had to be made, decisions that I hadn't even begun to think about. And it's often the same with any big event. We're so focused on the event itself that once it's over, once it's been and gone, we are left that with that feeling of, well, what's next? What are we going to do now? So I want you to put yourself in the footsteps of the disciples of Jesus. Three years they'd been with him. Three years full of expectation. Three years of following someone who was charismatic, exciting, someone who was making a real difference, someone who was going to change the world. And then Jesus is arrested and killed and naturally the disciples are devastated. But just as they're coming to terms with this, or indeed not coming to terms with it, Jesus is alive again. Yay, all is well. And then it's not, because Jesus is just taken from them, just like that. He's gone, and once again, they're stuffed. And this is what Luke says happened next, following Jesus' ascension to heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. And they probably then thought, what's next? What on earth are we going to do now? And I think that whole business of what's next is really important just now for two reasons. The first is connected to how we do church. In our church worship, we quite rightly make a lot of fuss over Christmas and Easter, rather less fuss over Ascension Day and Pentecost. But these festivals of our faith are hugely important and significant. So it was Ascension Day on Thursday, and it would be Pentecost Sunday in a week's time. But after that, there is zilch until we're back to Christmas again. Yes, there's Harvest Festival, but that's slightly different. In our lectionary, the set Bible readings for each Sunday, today is the seventh Sunday of Easter. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. The Sunday after that is Trinity Sunday. And the Sunday after that is called the 10th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in total, in our lectionary, There are 33 out of 52, 33 Sundays in ordinary time. And I think there's a lesson in that. Most of our lives are lived in what we might call ordinary time. Relatively little time is spent on the mountaintop and hopefully relatively little time is spent with our backs against the wall. Most of our life plays out in ordinary time doing the ordinary stuff of just getting on with our lives. And I believe that that is where God calls us most of the time to serve him, in the humdrum and the ordinary situations that we find ourselves in. Thinking about this, some lines of a poem came to mind. And when I'd managed to get my brain in gear enough uh, to Google it, I realised that the lines came from a Christmas poem. But this poem says really well something that I believe is very important. It's called The Work of Christmas by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, 
when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. Ordinary time. It's the stuff of our lives. Use that time and use it well. But you might very well say that these are not ordinary times through which we're living, and they're not. Although it's strange how we get used to a new routine and settle in to a new normal. One day, one day though, some point in the future, lockdown will be over. Yes, it will. And for some of you currently confined to a flat or a house with nowhere to go and no one to meet, and who can see no end to all of this, I want you to know that you are not forgotten, and that your isolation and loneliness is recognised and it is only too real. But also, have hope and allow yourself to think of what might come next after this lockdown is lifted. We don't know yet when that is going to be, and we have no idea of how life will have changed, if at all. But there will come a time when we will all think, now what? What happens next? So what lessons will we have learned during these weeks and months? What memories will we carry with us? What resolutions have we made in lockdown that we can live out in more ordinary times? What is God saying to us, both about the present and also about the future? Will this time make us sad and defeated? Or will we come out of it stronger with a determination to serve and to give and to share like we just weren't able to before this awful time began? How will this time change us? We're going to watch a short video now. It features a, a group of American uh, young people, but they could be young people from anywhere in the world. They represent the class of 2020. Earlier this year, I walked the halls of my high school for the last time. I went to my last college lecture. I saw some of my classmates and teachers for, for the, the very, very last, last time. time. And I didn't even know it. I had so many expectations of what was to come. Senior breakfast. Prom. That feeling when you finish the last exam. Being the first person in my family. To get handed a college diploma. Walking across the stage. All eyes on me. Good luck, hugs. And final waves goodbye. It's supposed to be my time. My time. My time. My time. A celebration of hard journeys and sweet victories. Proof that I didn't quit. But in a blink of an eye. Everything changed. And despite celebrations lost, victories not received, honors not given, I'm, I'm taking, taking something, something with them. me. And not something taught in class, but something taught in life. I can do all things. All things. All things. I can do all things through Christ. Who gives me strength. But it's not just about me. There's still some people I have to thank. Because no one crosses the finish line alone. I want to thank my parents for believing in me no matter what and reminding me every day that I can do anything I set my mind to. For praying for me every day and pushing me. I want to thank my coach for convincing me that I can do anything. I want to thank my professors for helping prepare me for God's plan for my life. It's for helping me stay confident. You helped me stand strong even when I didn't think I could. I want to thank my choir and drama teachers for showing me how to use my talents in a way that honors God. I want to thank my parents for helping me fulfill my dreams and told me the truth, even when I didn't want to hear it. I want to thank all of my teachers for going above and beyond to help me succeed. Showed me how to embrace creative thinking. Hopeful living. I want to thank my small group leaders. You pointed me toward God. So I will stand in his strength. I'll step out with grace over grief. With courage over fear. I will love God. I will love others. And I will make my mark in this world. I'll make my mark in this world. And I will make my mark in this world. I, I, I am a graduate. 
Well, I still look back on the class and the year of 1973 with great affection. But how will we look back on 2020 in years to come? Are you ready for when this is all over? What are you learning through this? What is God saying to you during this difficult time? In what ways can you become stronger through this time? What are the things and who are the people for whom you are thankful? When the ordinary times return, what's next? How will you make your mark in this world?
Good morning. We now come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Almighty God, may our prayers ascend to you, just as the Lord Jesus Christ, your son, was lifted up to heaven to your right hand side. As we celebrate the ascension of the Lord Jesus, let it inspire us with feelings of joy and hope rather than fear and uncertainty like the first disciples were. We pray our Father for those who we encounter in our daily lives, especially at the minute through the internet and social media. Help us to encourage each other and build each other up as some of us may be feeling lonely and feeling down. Not just in mind, but also feeling dejected in spirit and straying from the road of eternal love and life. Help us to do this by prayer and a gentle word of encouragement. Lord, we remember Nancy and Valerie who were taken from us. Two great ladies who encouraged us in our faith. So as we remember them, let us stay true to our faith and give the same kind of example to others. Loving God, we pray for all those who are filled with anxious thoughts of their future and their family's futures during these crazy times ahead. We pray for the ones whose jobs and livelihoods are in doubt and their aspirations crashing before their eyes, which can ultimately cause stress in relationships and family life. Help us all to remember during these days of uncertainty and anxious thoughts, your words through the prophet Isaiah, even to your old age and grey hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Lord, we pray for the ones who are sick at the moment, who are in hospital or being cared for by families, suffering from this virus, and other medical circumstances. Father, we hold up to you Brenda's daughter, Sarah, who is fighting cancer. We pray you will bless Sarah and care for her after her operation. And we also pray for the family at this time. Lord, we pray for those who are caught up in wars and violence and hatred, especially the innocent victims who end up the main afflicted out of everything. Lord Jesus, may your peace abound and righteousness flourish, that we may vanquish injustice and suffering forever. Father, as we go out into this coming week, make us mindful that we should constantly pray for your world and your people. Just as your son Jesus Christ prayed for his disciples and his ministry before returning to you. Father, accept all these prayers in the name of your son, Lord Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Create in me a clean clean heart create in me a work of art create in me a miracle something real and something beautiful create Yeah.
It's been so good to have you worshipping with us this week and we look forward to having you with us next week. Please subscribe to the channel to keep in touch. I hope that you've been blessed by sharing in this time of worship and my prayer would be that you would be open to God's word comforting you and challenging you about what comes next. So often as Christians we've been a little bit guilty of indulging in nostalgia, looking back to the supposedly good times. One thing that is abundantly clear in the narrative of the Bible is this, that God will constantly urge his people on to what's next. And that hasn't changed. He continues to keep moving on. Our task, each one of us, is simply to find out what God is doing and join in. God's not finished with you yet. So let's pray. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God be reflected in your hands, the wisdom of God be reflected in your words, the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you today and always. Amen. Big thanks to all who helped today, to Alan for the welcome, Paul for the prayers, Fred and Rachel for the readings. This is Lewis. It's his birthday tomorrow. I think it's important to say that this is an old photograph, but we wish you well, Lewis. And we're thinking of you, your mum, Sarah, your grandma, Brenda, and all the family at this time. And if we try and sing happy birthday now, I hope that that won't spoil it for you. So here we go. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Lewis, happy birthday to you. We're going to play out with a lovely little song. It's entitled A Little Bit of Love, written by Graham Kendrick, written just in recent weeks since lockdown started. The beginning of lockdown, Graham realised that... Uh, uh, the demand in his local food bank had gone up by 75% and so he thought what can I do to help so he thought I'll write a song and hopefully that song can be used to raise money for those who are in need it's a lovely little song a song of encouragement and it talks about uh, a wonderful truth that a little bit of love goes a long long way god bless folks see you all next week A little bit of love goes a long, long way. A little love, a little love, a little bit of love, and I'm on my way. A little love, a little love, a long way, but we'll get there together. A long way, but we'll get there soon. Along the way, we can lean on each other. A little love goes a long, long way A little love, a little love A little bit of love and the sun comes shining A little love, a little love A little bit of kindness and someone smiling A little love, a little love A long way but we'll get there together a long way, but we'll get there soon Along the way, we can lean on each other A little love goes a long, long way A little love, a little love Little drops of rain can trickle down into a puddle And the puddles get together, making streams that make a river The rivers fill the valleys with a roaring and a rushing And the little drops of rain have made a wide, 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 wide ocean A long way, but we'll get there together a long way, but we'll get there soon Along the way, we can lean on each other A little love goes a long, long way A long way, but we'll get there together A long way, but we'll get there soon Along the way, we can lean on each other A little love goes a long, long way A little love a little love, a little
Did you do anything? And I couldn't see anything else because I slowed it down slightly. Ah! Oh, it's not going well, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> right, okay, okay. Oh, it's still recording. 